A brand new year of Formula Drift is kicking off. Year 14 brings new challenges and new competitors who are vying for the spotlight in the biggest drifting championship in the world. But in order to disrupt the order, each competitor will have to bring their A-game in order to challenge the likes of Bakshis, Field, Gittin, Osbo, and current and three-time champion Chris Forsberg. It's 2017, and it's time to kick off the first event of the year right in the city streets of Long Beach, only on Formula Drift Black Magic Pro Championship presented by Blackview Dash Camera. Hello Drift fans and welcome to Long Beach, round one of the Formula Drift Black Magic Pro Championship presented by Blackview Dash Cameras. I'm Jared Dienda. Well, we have the making of a great event, great weather, the stands are going to be packed and the drivers are ready to do battle. A lot of the drivers teaming up. You look at Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Chelsea Denofa, Ryan Turk and Chris Forsberg, and then changing of vehicles. Frederick Osbo, 2015 champion, gets behind the wheel of a hot hatchback, the Toyota Corolla IM, still rock star and still next to tires, and he's ready to do battle. We have the making of a great event, but before we advance on to head-to-head -head battles, I throw it to my co-host, Ryan Sage. All right, well, thanks, Jared. I'm down here on the track at the Grand Prix of Long Beach, a course that we've been coming to for nearly 10 years. Now, the track has stayed the same, but last year we had an incredible amount of rain, which made it very challenging in qualifying and into the top 32. This year, it's hot, it's sunny. There's a lot of rubber laid down on the track. That means it's going to be fast, it's going to be smoky. Now, if you're a driver that can navigate through that smoke, use your muscle memory, and end up tucked up on the inside of your competitor, that last inside clip, you will stand on top of the podium here tonight. But before we get to the action in the top 16, we're going to go on board with Ken Vushi in our Blackview course preview. What's up guys, I am Ken Gushi and this year I'll be explaining to you guys the Blackview course preview. Here at the streets of Long Beach, I'll shift into first, drive through the chicane, accelerate, first gear, second gear, third gear, then chuck the car really hard into turn nine, aim for the touch and go, transition hard on the accelerator to the first outer zone one, shoot towards the judging stand and then break into corner 11 which is tightest curve pin turn right, accelerate in second gear through the finish line and that is your Blackview course preview. Drifting is the only motorsport in the world that is based on judging, so let's break down how that works. In head-to-head -head battles, the lead driver is supposed to run a specific judging line with as much angle as possible. The lead driver is setting the pace, but the chase driver is supposed to utilize the lead driver as a moving clipping point. Wherever the lead goes, the chase should go too. After two runs with each driver leading once, the driver that was the most consistent, most aggressive, and was able to show clear dominance over the other driver will win the matchup. For rules, criteria, and more information on Formula Drift, head to www.formulad.com. Now let's go behind the smoke and hear what the drivers have to say about round one. You know, I love coming back to Long Beach. It's, you know, city background. It's right down the street from my house, and uh, it's, it's awesome. It's sunny California. You know, it's such a great start of the year, working together with the Grand Prix. You know, we have uh, a great facility and, and a lot of, um, you know, staff to ensure that we have a very professional layout uh, to start our season. I think this is the best season opener we could ask for. You know, it's in the heart of a big city. You have the crowds cheering. You can hear them, you know, through your car. It's a pretty good spectacle down here. So Long Beach is great because not only are we in Southern California with perfect weather right now, um, also we're drifting on the streets of Long Beach. So you hear the car echo as you're doing a burnout, as you take off, it just, it feels wild. I mean, there's this, a level of prestige to it as well. This is the Grand Prix course, you know, this is where Indy cars are battling it out. And it's just a pleasure to be able to drift at this venue. This track is super hairy and perhaps one of the most difficult of the entire schedule. Uh, it is kind of like a pinball game as you're bouncing in between the walls, blind turns, no room for error. And uh, if you're off by a split second, you'll be right there inside the wall and that wall won't move. Winning here in Long Beach is all about having the right line and being consistent. 
You have to know the right spots here to be on people's doors, and you have to know when to give them room for their transitions. It's very easy to get caught behind somebody, so you have to look out for those key points on the track. You have to be very aware and make sure you execute the plan. Well, let's get on with it. Here we have our top 16 bracket, and we are ready to throw down on this menacing track. We kick things off with Vaughn Gittin Jr., former Formula Chip champion, going against Dean Carnage Carney. Well, with that number one qualification, Vaughn Gittin Jr. adding those awesome championship points to his total already. All right, Dean Carnage Carney, he leaves the start line first, which is allowed. Vaughn Gittin Jr., clean start out of the gate, thrown into that first corner. Dean Carnage Carney, not nearing the exact angle, but nice job. There's that three-wheel motion from Vaughn Gittin Jr. Great job right there by Dean Carney, staying close within proximity. You can see Vaughn a little bit off that second outer zone on that wall as we wrap around this last inside clip. You can see the house is packed, and Vaughn Gittin Jr. debuting his new car. It seems to be working out for him in that lead position. Well, the judge is really asking you to go wall to wall here. That's that first touch and go then to outer zone one and two, but Dean not letting Vaughn run away. Dean Carnage Carney will lead as Vaughn Gittin Jr. will give Chase a beautiful day out here in Long Beach. Through the chicane and down in this initiation right here is Dean Carney grabbing that e-brake, but Vaughn not letting him run away. Dean Carney get all the way out to the wall and shredding some carbon fiber. Great job right there by Dean to keep angling the car. Now Vaughn trying to close it up here as we get in this last inside clip. The aerial view, you can see Dean wraps it around and look at Vaughn straightens and goes into the side of that Oracle Lighting Dodge Viper. Well, there is some contact down there at that last inside clip. You can see Vaughn right there just takes that straight line approach, doesn't keep angling the car and forces contact with Dean Carney. All right, let's go to the Universal Technical Institute judging results, and it's unanimous. Dean gets the win. Yeah, I just took out Vaughn Gittin. He was a number one qualifier, actually, so pretty good win for the team. I think Vaughn just got a bit caught up on the last corner and just undercut it, and he won me, basically. When we come back, more Top 16 here on the streets of Long Beach. Formula Drift on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Black Magic. Own your shine. By Blackview Dash Cameras. And by Hankook Tire. Driving emotion. Welcome back to the streets of Long Beach. As you can see, we have a packed house. We have some old drivers, some new drivers, and an ever-growing fan base. Speaking of new drivers, Peter Vincek coming to us from Poland. He's a Formula Drift rookie. He's going against a top five finisher last year in Odi Bakshis. Well, a lot has been said about Peter as he comes into this 2017 season, but Odi Bakshis, a top five competitor, he's going to be tough to beat. Well, Peter running a 2JZ, Odi Bakshis running the V8 under the hood. Odi out front initiates. Peter right there in that Warehouse S15. Great job by Odi, really reaching out to that touch and going, look at that fluid transition back around at 66.2 miles per hour. Odi Bakshis has a lot more experience on this track, but Peter showing some muscle here in the latter portion, and just as I say that, some separation. Yeah, a big mistake there towards the end by Peter, and you can see that he's actually shut down on course. Let's take a look at this right there. Some contact made, potentially some damage there, and then just not able to finish the transition. So Odi Bakshis will now chase down this Formula Drift rookie from Poland, Peter Vincek. Clean start. Here we go, Ryan. Here we go. Odi looking to get in position to attack in the chase. Peter immediately gets on the throttle and runs away from Odi Bakshis. Now Peter Vincek, he is strong out front, 69.4 miles per hour, and gets out to that second rear clipping zone. Great job by Peter to go open up a big gap here. Now Odi Bakshis closing it, but with that damage in the first run, it's going to be too much to overcome. As we ride on the roof of Odi Bakshis' Falcon Tires S14, this could have ended up biting him, but Peter did have the mistake as we go to the Universal Technical Institute judging results. Odi Bakshis gets the victory. I honestly played it a little too safe. I gave him too big of a distance on initiation, and then I have to play catch up the rest of the run. But uh, I didn't have contact, you know, it was clean. So, you know, I got lucky on that one. Uh, by playing it too safe, I still got by. But definitely uh, the first lesson of the season. Well, Ryan, two very aggressive drivers, International Affair, Frederick Osbo. 
former Formula Drift champion, going against Kristaps Blues. These guys saw competition as recent as last year in Orlando, and some say it was Kristaps' battle to win, but he ended up getting second place to the Norwegian Hammer. Well, no doubt about that. Kristaps definitely wants one back from Frederick Osbo. Let's see if he can do it here as Osbo initiates, stays very deep into that touch and go. That hot hatchback, you can see he's minus kind of the bumper that a lot of the competitors do, but he still gets close, and Kristaps is right there. Oh, and looks like we have some contact there. Frederick Osbo in the lead position, and Kristaps Blues comes to a stop. You could see as Frederick Osbo comes across that portion of the track, Kristaps gets into the back of that Rockstar Toyota Corolla IM. Now Kristaps is gonna be out front. Well, Kristaps in a deficit here is really gonna have to pull out all the stops, and Osbo cannot back off either. That's a very fast HGK Latvian lover BMW as he gets out to that touch and go and then transitions into that first rear clipping zone. Well, Osbo keeping him in sights here. It looks like Kristaps is really gonna run out of room here in the last turn. Didn't have seen that Kristaps got all the way out there to those rear zones. He made it look fluid, he made it look clean, but with that contact, I think that's gonna be all she wrote for the Latvian driver in the BMW. Let's go to the Universal Technical Institute, judging results, and there it is, Osbo gets the win. Uh, hard fought battle indeed, I knew this was gonna to be tough, so my focus was on trying to run a really deep, good lead run, and we did. It was probably you know our best lead run of the night, and Kristaps smashes into me right after 10B, I feel something in my door, that's him smashing into me and spinning behind me. And then he gets all mad at me and uh, I think in fact he should have been mad at himself. Some big bold statements made by Frederick Osbo there as we move on to our next battle. Inca Madness racing from Lima, Peru, Alex Hilbrun, a former Pro 2 champion, going against Finland's own Juha Rintanen. Well, we've seen Hilbrun up on the podium before last year in New Jersey, and when his car is on point, he is a very dangerous driver. And Juha as well, it seems like he is really getting that car where he needs it to be as Alex Hilbrun transitions, look at that, shredding his bumper off the back under the bridge. Great job on outer zone one, a little bit short on outer zone two, but you can see you Juha through the smoke cloud here, tucks up on the inside and maintains pressure across the finish line. It's just absolutely amazing, the progression of the vehicles, the driver's ability and what they're putting down here. Juha Rinson and not phased by that Nitto tire smoke as he gains that proximity. Now Juha will be lighting up some Nexon tires out front as Hilbrun gives chase. Well, we saw a few mistakes by Alex, and we can see if Yuha can capitalize that. He really needs to reach out deep to that touch and go and get close to that outer zone one. They both initiated at the same time. You see some wavering there from Yuha Ritson. And getting out of the touch and go, taps the wall, and some straightening by Yuha. Well, you can see right here when you compare both leads, Alex definitely has the better of those two runs. And as they cross the finish line, looks like Yuha Ritson is out of room for improvement. So Yuha written in, that was the big correction. Alex Hilbrun keeps his composure. Let's go to the Universal Technical Institute judging results. And you have to assume, and there it is. Alex Hilbrun gets the victory. It was a hard battle. He hit a couple of walls in his lead run, so I had to step back a little bit and just be careful not making any contact because then that would play against me. So nothing, just keep it smooth and we got the win. Formula Drift on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Nexen Tire. Driving tomorrow. By Achilles Radio. Tires you can trust. By Falcon Tire. And by Universal Technical Institute. Chosen by industry. Ready to work. Welcome back to round one of the Formula Drift Championship here on the streets of Long Beach. We're on the waterfront as we advance on to our next battle. It's a big one. 2013 FD champion Michael Essa going against a champion of his native Ireland, James Dean. Well, for the hardcore fans of Formula Drift, this is the moment of truth right here. Everybody has been awaiting the arrival of James Dean, and now he's set to make his first battle. So James Dean, as you said, a lot of eyeballs on him. Let's see how he throws it here into that first touch and go area run. Well, you can see right there, minimal e-brake on initiation. He goes pretty deep into that touch and go, and right there taps the wall, but keeps Angle in the car. I'm really finding it surprising here. Essa giving himself some safe distance here. If he's having car problems or just being tentative, going against Dean. Whoa, and Essa right there makes a big mistake around the last inside clip. You can see him right here. He's gonna surge to tack on the inside and just overcooks it in the last corner. All right, so the Achilles Radial Essa Autosports BMW of Michael Essa will be out front. Will James Dean 
See action in the grade eight as he chases him down. Michael Essa has got a lot of work to do here. He needs to force an air on James Dean in order to get it one more time. And James Dean right on the door does not get all the way out to the touch and go. And Essa knows he needs to throw down a strong lead run. Very calculated right here by James Dean as he navigates through this smoke line in this last corner. Looks like it's going to be too much for Essa to overcome. Well, James Dean qualified second and it looks like he's going to be moving on to the grade eight. Essa just too much to handle there from James Dean. Let's go to the Universal Technical Institute, judging results, and James Dean advances on. Oh, it's amazing to be back. Um, the levels after jumping so high compared to when I was back here in 2010, um, it's just insane. But to be back here uh, competing against all the best drivers in the world is just mind-blowing for me. Uh, it's, a, it's a dream come true. Two Formula Drift veterans since day one going against each other. Ken the Goosh Gooshy against three-time and defending Formula Drift champion Chris the Force Forsberg. And Chris Forsberg having to rely on his trusty steed, that old engine setup, the new one not ready just yet. He was going to go for a V6 twin turbo back to that VK56. Ken Gushi, he's got the 2J under the hood, and he's also applying some pressure, some wavering from Gush as Forsberg out front. Good pressure by Ken, but not maintaining the line that Chris Forsberg has out front. Now Forsberg transitions in this last inside clip as Ken tries to attack and nearly makes contact with his door. Nice pressure there, but as you said, Ryan, some twitchiness there from that Toyota 86 of the Goosh. They're now going to alternate some positions. Ken Gushi will be out front, and Forsberg will give chase. Well, these two top drivers have had some epic battles in the past, but only one can move on in to the grade eight. Ken Gushi, straight line approach. Nice job on initiation. No faint entry. Throws it in. Doesn't get all the way out to the touch and go. Forsberg keeping his composure. Gushi throwing out some angle. You can see right here, Gushi struggling a little bit to get out to those walls, but Forsberg is not letting him run away, and that may be the difference in this battle. Nothing overly sensational or wow factor here. A straightforward run here, but Forsberg, I think, truly has the win here. As we take a look at our Universal Technical Institute judging results, and Chris Forsberg advances on to the grade eight. Gushi's a ripper. He's a veteran. He's a great driver and a class act. You know, I love Jason. I know I can drive real close with him and not expect any funny business. And yeah, we just put it on the marks and did a killer lead run, and our chases were pretty similar. So I feel like that we beat him with the leads. Six battles down, two more to go to define the grade eight. We're here on the streets of Long Beach kicking off the 2017 Formula Drift season when we return. Formula Drift on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Black Magic. Own your shine. By Nas with Complex Six for high performance energy. By Nitto Tire, fueled by enthusiasts and by Blackview Dash Cameras. Ryan Sage, the stage is set. And remember, after this round, we're gonna see who our current points leader will be. It's a long championship, but it all starts here, and I'm excited to see how it's gonna unfold. Ryan Turk, Justin Pollock, they are a second to last battle here on the streets of Long Beach. Well, both of these drivers really taking great strides in developing their program. Here we go with Ryan Turk and Justin Pollock. And it's a clean start. Ryan Turk qualifying third. That's a great position, but now it comes down to the head-to-head -head battles. Thrown into that first touch-and-go area. Ryan Turk gets out there. Pollock, he is looming in the shadows. Pollock right there, very aggressive, but losing a little bit angle on that transition to the first outer zone. Now trying to get through the smoke line here as we wrap around this last inside clip. And right there, looks like Pollock just takes out that cone in the last corner. You see Pollock make that correction towards the end and he center lines that front clip as he is thrashing, throwing down some metal and some rubber. As now we're gonna alternate some positions as Justin Pollock out front, Ryan Turk and Chase. Well, here we go, Justin Pollock through the chicane, down the straight into initiation, kind of a straight line approach here. Grabs a knee break. You can see Turk right there falling behind for a second, then gets on the throttle and closes the door. Transitioning through is Justin Pollock. Great big angle there as he lights up his Falcon tires and approaching that final clip. Ryan, what do you think? Well, when you compare the lead to lead and chase to chase runs, it looks like that mistake by Pollock in his first chase run is going to be the overall factor here. As you can see, Ryan Turk maintains pressure and does not make a mistake in this last corner. Going to the Universal Technical Institute, judging results, Ryan Turk unanimously gets the win. You know, I entered in a little behind Pollock, but I was able to close the gap on him right into the first turn. Uh, I just stayed with him the rest of the way on his door. He threw more angle than me, but I was able to just keep my bumper right up on his door. And uh, with the mistake he made in the first one, I'm pretty sure that's what guaranteed us the win. Well, here it is, Ryan, our final battle. It's the battle of the mats. Matt Kaufman, 
Matt Field, Kaufman qualified sixth. And Matt Field, the beast from the Bay. I gotta say, he has the most momentum coming from last year. He got back-to-back -back victories, Matt Field. Absolutely, he's definitely the driver to watch this weekend, but he's gotta get through Matt Kaufman here in the top 16. Both the eight-powered S chassis, Ford variety under Kaufman's hood, and the Chevy variety under Field. Oh, Field with some wavering there. Well, good progression right here by Field to stay on and close to Matt Kaufman, but you can certainly tell the car setup is not there just yet because he had some wavering, has had to back off and let Matt Kaufman perhaps take an advantage after run number one. All right, so Matt Field, as I said, not running 100%, but knowing Matt Field, he's going to throw down and leave it all out on the track. Matt Field will be out front, and Kaufman will give chase. Look at that right there, Field whipping it out of the start line there into initiation, back on the throttle here, Kaufman. Keeping an eye on him as Field goes deep into that zone, but does not touch the touch and go. And there you go, I talked about it, and he delivers, leaving it all out there on the track map. Field, Coffin cannot be shaken though, as they wrap it around that final front clip, Whoa. and narrowly around that black Magic Intense tire wet clipping point. Really tight there as Mad Coffin, you can see from this vantage point, closes the door, but does not falter there in that last zone. Universal Technical Institute judging results, Matt Kaufman gets the win. I know Matt was actually really lacking on uh, on motor. I think he actually was missing a cylinder when I heard him in the burnout box behind me and I knew his motor was hurting. So, uh, and I know he was having some uh, some issues just keeping the car dialed. Well, now we're moving up into the top eight. I'm not sure exactly who I'll be against now at this point, but um, I'm just having fun, enjoying the sun in California and whatnot, and just having a blast. Him among seven other drivers have forged the great eight and our next installment of round one of the Formula Drift Black Magic Pro Championship presented by Blackview Dash Cameras, the fans eagerly await to find out who takes it to the podium. Will it be Odie Bakshis and his Falcon Tires S14? Or James Dean after a seven year hiatus has re-entered Formula Drift competition? Matt Coffin, as he said, he's having some fun. Alex Hilbrun, his team working feverishly to get back on a podium. Then you have Dean Carnage Carney, another Irish driver behind the wheel of that Dodge Viper. And finally, Drift Alliance brothers off the track, but fierce competitors on the track, Ryan Turk and three-time Formula Drift champion, Chris Forsberg. Join us as we round out round one of the Formula Drift Championship here on the streets of Long Beach. Who's on the podium? Who's gonna be the points leader? We'll find out shortly. In association with Formula Drift, this has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.